The burden of being captain and the importance of Sabaody Acapelica. Sabaody Acapelica was a monumental arc for the Straw Hats. It did something that none of the other arcs, none of the other islands could do for the Straw Hats. It humbled them. It humbled Luffy. It showed the crew that they were not ready for the challenges that they're about to face in the new world. Traveling through the East Blue and the Grand Line, the Straw Hats were on a high. They had defeated two warlords of the sea, Crocodile Moria. They had broken into one of the most strongest strongholds of the navy, Eni's Lobby. They had defeated CP0, one of the government's elite task forces. They were unstoppable. And along that journey, Luffy had collected so many powerhouses for crewmates, such as the pirate hunter Roar Norozoro and the demon child Nico Robin. Two people who had a reputation notorious before joining the Straw Hat crew and many other power hitters. My boy God Usopp. The Straw Hats were on a high. They were on a roller coaster of adventure. They could not be stopped. Any foe that stepped in the Straw Hats' way was taken down swiftly and effectively. But that was until Saba Odi Acapelica. Up until this point, the Straw Hats weren't tested. Up until this point, Luffy's leadership wasn't tested. He had never had to feel the burden of actually being a captain. He had a small taste of it when he had to dispute with Usopp in Water 7. That's until we get to Sabaody Archipelago. As you already know, the Celestial Dragons are seen as gods of this world. They are the most highest form of power. Whatever they do is law. They buy slaves, they kill people. Luffy was advised by his friends not to bother the Celestial Dragons, not to interrupt them, not to even interact with them. This was almost messed up by Zoro, almost cutting down Charles, but it was stopped by Bonnie. Despite the pleas of his friend, Luffy ends up punching a Celestial Dragon. It was in good faith because the Celestial Dragon has shot his friend Hachi, but the ripple effect that that punch was going to cause was greater than Luffy would ever know. Punching Charles sent a Navy Admiral to Sabaody, and as we already know, that was Kizaru, and he didn't come alone, he brought pacifistas. And up until this point, the crew has not fought a Navy Admiral, aside from Aokiji, where they got humbled. And this is also coming off of their fight on Thriller Bark with the Warlord Moria. They're tired, they're beat, they're exhausted. Luffy made a rash decision in that moment that may have been right and made him feel good, but it was actually to the detriment of his crew. They weren't ready for this fight. They weren't prepared. And it shows when Kizaru wipes the floor with people. If it wasn't for Rayleigh stepping in, Zoro would have died. They all would have died. Kizaru also came with the pacifistas, which the crew had no clue about which one pacifista alone was wiping them out. And unbeknownst to them, Bartholomew Kuma even shows up. And he starts Thanos snapping each one of Luffy's crew away, one by one by one, as Luffy has to watch his crew disappear into thin air. Unbeknownst to Luffy, he thought they were either captured or dead. He didn't know the power of the pawpaw fruit and how it was actually sending them somewhere else, but he thought they were dead or captured. And as he hears each one of his crewmates scream and plead, he yells out to them, run, run, we can't win this fight. And Luffy never runs from a fight. Cause up until this point, he's fought everything, every fight, every enemy, every obstacle, brute force. But he realizes that brute force is not going to get him past this foe. Brute force is not going to help him win this fight. So he tells everybody to run, but it's too late. His actions led to these consequences. If Luffy never punched a celestial dragon, they could have got their boat coded. They could have been on their way to Fishman Island. They could have went about their business. But because he punched Charles, and even though it was in good faith to save a friend, it caused this ripple effect. And Luffy was not ready for that ripple effect. And he breaks. Once all his crew has been Thanos snapped out, 
he broke. And we see a side of Luffy that we've never seen before up until this point. He starts to scratch and plead at the floor, saying how he's useless and he can't help anybody. As Bartholomew Kuma hovers over him, the giant of a man he is, and just stares at him. And you see the tears coming down Luffy's face. He bangs his head into the floor. Luffy was humbled in that moment. Luffy learned multiple lessons in that moment, that his actions have consequences, that you can't brute force your way through everything. And like I said, even though it was with a good intention, the effect that it caused was a lot worse than he expected. And that's what he needed. Luffy needed to be humbled. Luffy needed to learn these lessons. And that is the importance of Saba Odi Acapelaga. He learned in that moment the burden of being captain. Your crew will follow you, but your decisions matter. They will follow you to hell and high water, but you have to make the right decisions for them to follow behind. And that is the burden of being captain. Thank you for watching this video. I do multiple anime videos, anime takes, and other videos involving anime, animation, and anime discussions. If you like, make sure you like and comment down below. YouTube thinks you should watch the video that appears on the square, whether it's here, 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 or up here. And my name is Noel Vermillion, and I just wanna say, Thank you all for everything, and I appreciate every last one of you. I love you. Peace out.